Story Corner, presented by Jennifer. G, Yin and Yu, Part 4. The next morning, Yu's illness was worse. It was just as Yin had feared. She was certain her brother would not make it through another night. They were out of time. She had to track down Jin today if there was any hope for you. Luan flew ab above to scout a path. When he returned, he hopped along the edge of the map as Yin flattened the fabric out. Luan looked serious, his dark eyes scanning the fabric. Suddenly, the bird flapped his wings excitedly. What is it? Yin asked him. Luan pecked at the cloth, touching one of the green threads several times with his beak before tearing it loose. That bamboo was there yesterday, the girl said, and the bird nodded his tiny head. Luan then flew up to lead the way. Yin picked up her brother. He groaned, but Yin couldn't tell if Yu was sleeping or awake. His eyes were barely open and even his breathing sounded painful. You're going to be okay, Yin promised her brother. Then she hurried to follow Luan's lead, carrying the sick boy as fast as she could through the mace. Yin kept the map handy as she walked, occasionally checking to see where Luan had led them. It wasn't long before they were approaching a major crossroads. The girl looked down at the map. Three different paths converged in one spot ahead of Yin, and beyond it, up one of the paths, was where Jin had eaten. Yin began to walk quickly, but then she heard this, a sound that stopped her in her tracks. Voices. There was a sound, like someone opening and closing the latch of a box. Yin paused to listen. There were three or four men somewhere in the bamboo. She didn't know what they were working on, but they talked about as if they had they talked as if they were taking great care. Yin looked up. She could see the tops of the leaves moving and not from the wind. One patch of bamboo significantly was significantly was shaking. Suddenly there was a clang and the workers gave relief sighs as if they finished something very difficult or dangerous. The girl looked at her looked again at her map. She could see the bamboo walls dividing the path where the near, were narrower as they approached the crossroads. The men's voices were coming from the other side of the wall. But what were they doing? Yin leaned into the bamboo and listened closely. Luen flew back to her aid. Jin has been here, one man said. This patch. It looks like she's been eating here, doesn't it? How would you know? Another said. If she stops to eat here again, she'll have a surprise waiting for her. A third voice said. It sounded m like a much younger person. A boy, not much older than Yin. Yin remembered the trap she encountered earlier in the maze. It was deep in the bamboo itself. Maybe these men were putting the trap there. But why? To catch Jin? All along, Yin had felt like an outsider in the Great Bamboo Maze. She was searching for Jin, as if the maze belonged to the Great Beast. But now these men were take, talking about the panda as if she were the outsider. It, was, it seemed like they just wanted Jin for some reason. Yin didn't know what the group of men wanted for sure, but she knew she had to find Jin before they did. If they caught the panda, there would be no hope for curing you. Suddenly, her brother coughed. Yin whispered for the boy to be quiet. She felt his forehead. Yu was sweating, and yet his lips looked dry and chapped. He coughed again, more loudly. Yin worried that the sounds would alert the workers. She listened. Whoever it is will get them. The men were saying she could hear they were already running her way. She looked at the map. There were bends and curves on their side of the bamboo wall. 
if the map was right, it would take them a while to get to her. Still, she had to hurry. Ian ran for the crossroads as fast as she could, her brother coughing painfully the whole way. As she burst into the sunlight, it momentarily blinded her. Lewin flew straight for the path to where Jin had eaten, but Yin couldn't see which way he take which way he'd taken. Yin felt someone watching her. She turned around, and a black boar stepped into the sunlight, peering towards her. It snorted and stomped the ground. The girl began to back away, staring in horror at the boar's sharp tusks and angry eyes. Suddenly, there was a growl so deep it felt like the ground was shaking. The sound made Ian's blood turn cold in her veins. She turned and saw a white and green alligator poking its long snout into the sun behind her. The reptile opened its wide jaws, hissing at the girl. Each of the beasts would have been a frightening sight on their own. Together, they made Yin wonder if she was in a nightmare, lost in a maze with the dangerous predators. Something told her it wasn't a coincidence that both of these animals had come upon her. Out of the bamboo three came three men, the three of the men Ian had hurt, only they weren't dressed like workers. They were dressed like warriors, soldiers. But for whose army? Ian didn't recognize their foreign uniforms. These men were not part of the Zong's military. So who were they? The black boar circled back to a man in a gray cloak. The alligator whipped its tail back and forth, then backed behind a pale man with red hair. The men looked at Yin as if they didn't know what to do with her. Don't move, the red-haired man commanded. Yin froze. Where was Luen when she needed him most? She imagined him watching the scene from a safe perch, high up in the canopy of the bamboo. Two of the men emerged along with the boy. Two more men emerged along with the boy. Who is this? The boy said. Yin recognized his voice from before. He had a spirit animal too. An orange and wet, white dahal. A wild looking, as wild looking as any dog Yin had seen on the mountains. The animal snarled when it saw Yin, garnishing its teeth. Grab her, someone said, and Yin ran. Out of the corner of her eye, she saw Lewin flapping his white and black wings. She ran towards the bird, down the path he was motioning from. Yin had never run faster than she did right then, even though she was carrying her small brother and nearly tripping on the dirt below her feet. At some point, she turned back to look, but none of the animals or soldiers had followed her. Yin noticed that the bamboo around her was different than she'd seen. Dark and old. She could see spider webs in the shadows at the base of the bamboo. Lewin, Yin whispered. Her legs were beginning to feel weak and clumsy. Don't lose me. Suddenly, the starling flew back to her from ahead. Yin could tell the bird was nervous. The bamboo that formed the maze was unhealthy looking here. The leaves and stalks were spotted with gray mold. When Yin saw it, she checked the map. She couldn't believe Jin would eat diseased bamboo. Luan flew up high to check their position. Sure enough, they were headed the right way. In fact, the starling eagerly ripped another X from the map. It seemed Jin had eaten more bamboo since that morning. What would I do without you? The girl asked her spirit animal. Luan fluffed his feathers and let out a small song. Then... With pride swelling in his chest, he turned and to fly ahead again. As soon as Lewin was in the air, though, something pounced. What had looked to Yin like nothing more than a shadow leapt out of the dark bamboo at Lewin, pinning the bird to the ground. Yin screamed. It was a bird spider, a tarantula. The hairy arach arachnid was as big as Yin's hand. The spider hadn't bitten Lewin. Not yet. But why was it waiting? Out of the far shadows stepped a woman in the same uniform as the men. Yuen had run from. The woman was old. She didn't look like a soldier. And anyways, Zong's military didn't allow female warriors. 
She smiled a devilish smile, revealing rows of black, rotted teeth. Ian stepped back as the woman approached her. The woman reached down and grabbed Lewin in both hands, and as she did, the spider climbed up the woman's arm and neck and into her nest of hair. It perched on top of the woman's head, fluffing her hair with its eight thick legs. Give him back, Yin demanded. The great bamboo maze is no place for children, the woman said, looking down at Yu sleeping in the sling. Yin could barely carry her brother anymore. She was so tired, too tired to run. But she soon straightened as she addressed the woman in front of her on the path. I need to find the health bringer, Jin, Yin told her. My brother is sick. I can see that, the woman said, a small smile on her face. She checked behind her and over Yin's shoulders before whispering, I want to help you. Perhaps if you just come with me. Jin's mouth fell open. She didn't understand. The woman held Luan out to Jin, to Yin, but when the girl reached for the bird, the woman grabbed her wrist, wrist right where Luan went when he slept as a tattoo. Soon she was dragging Yin up the path, back towards the men and animals at the crossroad. Who are you? Yin asked the woman, sobbing. Why are you doing this? I'm going to help you, the woman said, and you are going to help us. She then snatched Yu's sling from Yin from her. Yin cried in protest, but the old woman was stronger than she appeared, forcing her down. Soon she was carrying the sick child herself, pulling Yin behind her. They arrived at a ragged camp filled with soldiers like the ones Yin had encountered earlier. Most were just sitting around waiting to be given orders. One of them hailed the old woman, calling her Nao. Strangely, even one of the soldiers Every one of the soldiers appeared to have a spirit animal. Yin had always heard that the mark were very rare. The one woman, the old woman, pushed Yin forward, and she fell face first into the dirt. Get this brat to work, Nao said, as she followed the soldiers, to her fellow soldiers. There are more traps to be made. I want that elfish panda's talisman in my hand before the invasion begins. What are you going to do with Jin once you find her? Yin asked, wiping the dirt from her face. But she received no answer. Instead, one of the soldiers tossed her uniform like everyone else's. If we find her, can I ask the panda a question? Yin called after the woman as she walked away with you. Please, she begged. Nayo just ignored her.